In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Eclipse Java debugger. And I'm going to highlight three important things that you're going to need to know to run your program in debug mode. The first of which is switching between perspectives. A perspective is simply the arrangement of views that you see when you open up Eclipse. These views, you might think of these as panels or windows. Uh, and the default view, which is the Java view, has a certain arrangement of views and the debug view or perspective is going to have an arrangement of views that is different and it's more helpful for the debugging purposes. The second thing I'm going to focus on is breakpoints and how to step through your code at runtime and the third thing I'm going to finish up the video with is some optional things that you can do with breakpoints and that is add a hit counter or a conditional to it. So I'm going to be demonstrating this in Eclipse Neon, which is the latest version as of the time of this recording. And I've made a sample program that has two uh, of what I consider to be the most likely reasons you would need to step through some code. You either have a loop that you want to examine and see how it's processing, at runtime, or you have a nested uh, block of code that you want to see how it goes through this nested block. So essentially, I, I have a real short program here that I call Debug Me, and we're going to watch two variables change over time, one that I call Iteration, and that's just going to let us know how many steps have taken place, and another one called Mystery. So we're watching over a variable called mystery to see how its value changes when the program is running. Okay, so let's first talk about perspectives. The way that you see these panels over here or everywhere in, if I were to mess this up a little bit, this is called the perspective and you can arrange this however you want, whatever is the most comfortable for you. Anytime you want to reset this, you would go to the window menu, scroll down to perspective and say reset perspective. And I'm going to confirm that by clicking yes. And it's going to pop back to its default. So uh, this is the Java perspective. If we want to get to the debug perspective, there's a couple of ways. We could also go to this window menu, go down to perspective, open perspective and select the debug option. That's going to switch us into this arrangement of panels which uh, now we have a couple of new ones. We have a debug panel up here. Or they're known as views in Eclipse. A variables view, a breakpoints view as well. Uh, an outline over here. This is our code itself. The console shifted to the bottom. We also have a tasks view open as well. And now if I wanted to get back to my original perspective, again, I have multiple ways to do this, but I can go to Window, scroll down to Perspective, Open Perspective, and now switch back to Java. And now I've returned to where I've come from. A quicker way to do that is you can toggle between these two views over here once, the, once you've launched them. So the default one is Java, and then the debug one looks like a little bug icon over here. You can add additional views by clicking that icon right there. And usually the way that I do it is I uh, have my code open and then I'm looking for the debug icon here. And this is actually going to run my program in debug mode and switch to the debug perspective at the same time. So if I go ahead and do that, I'm going to go ahead and click this. The first time you launch it, it's going to ask you if you want to switch to that perspective and you want to do that every time. I usually keep this box checked right here. Uh, that'll be an option for you, so you can check it, you can not check it, but I tend to keep it checked. But you're going to have to click yes to jump to that perspective anyway. And uh, now you're in debug mode. The program has actually gone through all of its execution and it has uh, printed to the console this big number. Now if we want to pause the program at some point 
the way that we can do that is to add breakpoints. So a breakpoint, what that means is it's essentially going to pause the program on that line of execution if and when the program gets there. So let me put the definition up here, basically. All right, so if the program can reach that point of code, it will pause. Let me just demonstrate real quick. So here's our main method. We know that it's at least going to get to this line of code. So if I double click the line number, or to the left of the line number in here, what's called the gutter, if I double click there, that adds a blue dot. That is a breakpoint. Now if I run the program again, and I'm going to click the little bug icon to do that, it pauses the program at this line of execution, which is essentially the first thing it's going to do. So now I have some additional options that I can do. So I'm going to look at the toolbar up here, and we're going to go through all of this right here. Now the first thing I could do is I could now resume the execution of the program by just pushing play and it's going to run through the rest of the program and spit out that number. So at any point I want to continue the execution, I could push that play button. Now let me do that again, but I'm going to add a second breakpoint. So if I double click right here and I push the debug icon in the toolbar, it pauses at this first breakpoint, and when I push resume, it will go all the way to the next breakpoint. So sometimes you want to add multiple breakpoints in here and jump from one to the next. And a quick way to do that is by arranging them like, like so. All right, if I want to stop the program, this is the terminate button. And sometimes after you terminate, I like to clear out my debug window up here so I don't have any additional threads running. Let me go ahead and remove these breakpoints right now. So I'm going to double click this one and double click that one and that gets rid of them. And we're going to put them at a different point. So let's put one on line 14 right now where this variable called mystery is going to get a value from this method called calculate. So let's go ahead and run the program again. And now I have the option right here in the toolbar to step into or step over. Let me show you the difference between the two. If I step into, it's going to go into the calculate method. So that means that it's going to jump from this line. So the green line here is the line that it's currently on. And it has not executed that line yet. So it's going to jump from this line into this method here called calculate. And that's if I did the step into option. If I did step over, it would not run this, or basically it's going to run this line, but then go right to line 15. So if we're interested in knowing what the calculate method is going to return so and store in mystery, I might want to step into it. If I'm not interested in it, I might want to step over it. So I'm going to go ahead and click step into, and you're going to see it jumped from line 14 down to line 26. Now, if I look at the toolbar, I have three options. And that's because essentially they're, the first two options, step into and step over, are going to function exactly the same. So if I step into, it just calculated this method here. Step over would have done the same thing, and now I'm on return to mystery. The third option is called step return. Step return is going to take us back to where we came from. So we came from this, the main method, into the calculate method, and if I click step return right now, it's going to take me back. Now, because this is the end of the method down here, essentially all three of these are going to be doing the same thing. They would all take us back to where we came from. So I'm going to go ahead and click this third option, which takes us back to line 14. But now calculate, this has become an expression that can now be evaluated. We know what the result of it is going to be. And when we go to the next line, it's going to essentially give that result to the variable mystery to hold. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. 
And now mystery is listed right here in our variable list with its value. Now I can continue and now it's going to go down into this nested structure. So another thing that you may want to use in debug mode is you've got a complicated nested condition and you want to find out how exactly it's working at certain points of the program. So this allows us to step through that as well. If I click step into, it's going to go down to the conditions that are true and return the result. And now we've gone through one iteration of this loop. All right, so we've gone through the loop one time and mystery is zero. If I step through this a couple of times, I'm going to watch this variable list up here change its value. So iteration at this point in the program, we've gone one time. Mystery has now got a value of four. And after a couple of steps through this program, I can watch the variables change. Okay, I'm going to click the resume button. It takes us back all the way up to the top. And now on the third iteration, mystery is holding a value of 20. Now, this loop is going to iterate until iteration is less than 100, or no longer less than 100. So instead of having to step a whole bunch of times or click this button a whole bunch of times, I can set conditions or, or a hit counter to say, run this all the way to the 99th iteration, uh, and then pause the execution. To do that, you're going to right click or control click on a Mac, the breakpoint, and go down to breakpoint properties. And this allows you to add, for instance, a hit counter, a conditional, or both. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's just focus on the hit counter right now. Let's say I want to pause the program when this breakpoint has been reached 99 times. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to stop the execution of our previous debug session. I'm going to clear that out. And I'm going to run it again. But now this breakpoint's only going to be triggered after it's been reached 99 times. So I'm going to go ahead and click debug. And here you can see it went from 0 to 98. That's 99 iterations. And the value of mystery is this big, enormous number right here. So that's a quick way to jump through iterations is to add a hit counter, but maybe you want to do a conditional instead. So let me show you quickly how a conditional would work. I'm going to go ahead and stop the execution and terminate that thread. And I'm going to right click on this breakpoint and go down to breakpoint properties. And instead of a hit counter, I'm going to add a conditional. In this case, maybe I want to pause when mystery is greater than uh, I don't know, 10,000. So I'm going to click OK. And whenever mystery becomes greater than 10,000, that's when it's going to pause. So I'm going to go ahead and click Debug. And now it's telling me on the 10th iteration, that's when mystery is holding a value of 16,550. So it met that condition. And that's another way to pause the execution. Okay, so now we could combine those two. We could say if the hit counter is greater than, uh, let's say, 20, and the value of mystery is greater than 20,000, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now we have the situation where the breakpoint here has been reached 20 times. I know that because if I look at my iteration variable, it went from 0 to 19, which is 20 iterations. But the second thing that it has to reach is mystery also has to be a value of over 20,000. So these two conditions are true right now, and therefore the execution of the program has paused. So it's both 20 iterations and mystery has a value over 20,000. So you can combine those two things to reach unique situations that you might need to uh, 
test in debug mode. Uh, so now let's do a quick review of everything we've talked about in this video. I'm going to go ahead and stop the execution of debug mode, clear this out, and I'm going to run from the beginning. And mainly, you're going to be working with the step functions. So I could click the step into or step over. On this line of code, which is not executed yet, if I click step into, it's going to have to jump to the calculate method and it will step you through that portion. But if I wanted to skip that and I just wanted to go from line 14 to line 15, I would want to click the step over option. So if I click that, it's going to go to line 15 as opposed to clicking step into, which now on line 15 would jump us to the get nested result method. If I click that, it will jump to that method so it can step you through that portion. But step return will show up when you are jumping into a method and can come back. So if I go ahead and click step return, it takes us back to the line that called get nested result. And some lines of code, for instance, if I go to the next line like iteration, will function pretty much the same whether you click step into or step over because it's not calling any other functions or methods. I could always click the resume button to essentially finish the execution of the program. Uh, the stop button or terminate button is located here. And to get back from debug mode to the default perspective, you could go to window perspectives, open perspective, and click Java. And in the top right corner of the perspective uh, that you're currently in, it will say Java up there, and you can click that as well. So that's debugging in Eclipse. If you have any questions, just email me or see me in class.